we're here on the Roger Blackburn and, and Gene Miller Farms in Webster County. I thought what we'd do is go, go out through the field this way and try to move some birds to get them going and then the dogs maybe watch where they go. Well, the Bob White in Kentucky have been on a long-term decline. Historically, we had much higher numbers because quail were a remnant or a byproduct of typical agriculture. Uh, through changes in agriculture to support the masses through technology, water spread use of larger field sizes, uh, we've seen a dramatic decline in quail because that habitat that was once a byproduct of normal agriculture is no longer part of the landscape. We get this quail hunting to come back like the old days, like when we were growing up, you know. <laughs> We've been trying to restore Bob White in a number of ways for a long period of time in the state. We started releasing quail actually in the 30s. We had a widespread operation of why we once were called the game farm here uh, at headquarters, uh, where we grew and released about 3.5 million quail all the way through the late 80s. And we never really answered the true problem of why we didn't have quail, which was widespread habitat. There they go. Yes, good shot. Come on. Come on. There we go. That's, a good I thought it was, wasn't it? We're here to help the, the private landowner because 90% of Kentucky is made up of private land and that's where the majority of the habitat lies. And so the focus of Fish and Wildlife is assisting these, these landowners to, to benefit and improve the, the habitat that they may have on their farm. Well, let's, let's go down here towards where those three or four went and then we'll cut back across. We might get one or two of those out. In this particular situation, we're dealing with the CRP program, or Conservation Reserve Program. And they provide incentives or cost share payments for strip disking, for prescribed burning, and herbicide treatments, along with annual rental payments if it's, if it's enrolled into the program for a, a contract. What, as a, as a landowner and as a quail hunter, made you decide to get into this program? Uh, I felt like that uh, the CRP program was uh, uh, somewhat comparable to what you could get out of it cropping. And being a quail hunter, I uh, felt like that we, we need to take advantage of it because the uh, habitat is shrinking all the time, the quail population is going down all the time, and we've always been quail hunters, and that's our little part, I guess. <laughs> okay. Just make a swipe up through there, we might get, get something up, get another point. first started, we had a monoculture of native warm season grass. In March of 2007, we conducted a prescribed burn on uh, both of these farms and then followed that up with a, with a strip disking regime. We also combined that with some herbicide treatments to create more of an early successional habitat and bare ground environment that's uh, so necessary for, for quail and many other species uh, that benefit from a diversity of plants. I didn't see where he went down. He's, he's got it behind him with weeds, tell me. You've seen the fruits of these guys' labor. You've seen the state of Kentucky back in the day when it was a pretty hopeless situation. Tell us what you think about the efforts here and how they paid off. What's really encouraging here today is you not only see a lot of birds, and that is proof, it's evidence that everything the QU is about and what we are about is habitat that if you have the habitat, you'll get the birds. I would say we've probably had a double, doubling of the population here by going to this program. Some of the habitat things we've done, food plots and things like that, shrubs, leaving the briar patches, mowing around them and leaving them in place, it's, it's uh, provided kind of a cubby headquarters for the quail. This is not a huge piece of ground. They've done this with a, a pretty modest piece of property here and they've got a lot of birds on it. And these are all wild birds. Oh. Let's swing out down through here on this hillside. That's the way he said, Bill said they went. Well, the landowner has a tremendous investment in their property. And a lot of people aren't in this for fun. They're making a living off of their property. So they have to figure out a way to maximize the income. And we understand that. And the Department of Fish and Wildlife, in cooperation with species groups like QU, work together to make sure that money's available to help underwrite all the hard work that you would put into putting that habitat in there. 
Well, we, we'll probably just go on up and hit that other cubby then. How long does something like this take to get this going? Well, it's a commitment by the local landowner. And uh, I'd like to thank Roger Blackburn, who owns this property, and, and some of his family who have implemented some really good habitat management practices here. And have, he's got a neighbor across the road. Yeah, exactly. See, he, right. he's got his neighbor involved in this, and, and that's what it takes. We need widespread, connected habitat, and having neighbors working together is critical. Communities of people will bring back quail. If someone's interested in having habitat support from the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources, uh, simply call our 800 number uh, or uh, check on the website. We have uh, a link. On the home page, you'll see an image of a quail. Want more wildlife? Ask me how. You can click on that. There's an application there to request assistance. Uh, that's a great way of getting in contact with us. A, a private lands biologist will give you a call, try to set up an appointment, and that's the first step to getting started with habitat restoration of your property.